uh, Halloween cupcakes. I've got my Halloween cupcake cases. You will see this all on the blog, so don't worry. I will put it on the blog. Um, but they are... Hopefully we will go to a Halloween party this year. I know it's a bit early, it's the beginning of October, but I'm kind of starting to feel a bit autumnal. Um, and I never normally have. I never normally like Halloween. I don't like the scary part of it. I like dressing up. I don't like doing all the makeup. I'm not... Brings me out in a bit of... Um, bad skin <laughs> um, but other than that I do like it I like getting all festive like the decor and everything I love it so I'm gonna make some cup cupcakes I've also got some sneak peek of a very exciting layout that it's going to be under so I can't wait and I will take you through it step by step as I go I'll show you everything I'm doing so don't worry is that better not really no so, yeah, don't miss out. My first, what I'm doing first, I'm just lining the cupcake tray. I am using these cupcake cases. They're from a place called Essentials. It's actually down my road. I'm not sure if they've got one everywhere, but you'll be able to find these in, not gonna lie, probably all good retailers and like any like cookware shops or anything. So they're just 36 cupcake cases, quality cases, uh, with little pumpkin stars and moons on, so I thought they were quite festive. So next, I'm actually reading a recipe off of BBC Good Food, highly recommend it, it's a very very good website. So, so I need 200 grams of butter, softened, well that's not very good is it, because my butter's in the fridge. And I'm kind of listen to Maroon 5 actually, kind of throwing it back a bit. I don't know if to use this. I'm going to have to ask. Uh, so I'm going to use this. Stalk. Perfect for cakes. So I've heard. 200 grams. Right. 25, 50, 75, 100. 125, 150, 125. So 200? I don't know how much it's going to be. That might be a bit much. I don't know, not enough. <laughs> Obviously. Perfect. Got me butter. Oh, I should have done the other bit first, shouldn't I? I always do that, you know. I always put butter in the mixing thing first and then obviously all the sugar gets stuck to it and it's like why do I do that? I do it all the time, every single time I bake. Really stupid idea, that's not very good is it? Right so, I've bought this as well, <laughs> gone all out this time, I've got a Kenwood hand mixer because I found, I was trying to make a mirror glaze cake and um, I needed a hand mixer and so, so I've got a whisk, so I thought, yeah, why not? Oh, my whisks! Uh, right, so instructions one. Oh, it doesn't say. Perfect. And make sure the speed switch one is off. Oh, position. What? I just don't understand. some chocolate as you can see in that. oops I've just broken up some chocolate as you can see in there it does say use 200 grams of dark chocolate but I don't have 200 grams of dark chocolate I've got about 50 grams 
<laughs> so I'm just going to use 200. I've got no milk chocolate at all. Well, it's going really well, isn't it? Let's just see how much of this is. So I'm going to add that now to my mix. That's quite tricky because half the chocolate's in the bowl. I love dark chocolate. Right, so that's that. So then your bowl should look like this. Yep, there we go. And now I'm also going to add two eggs. This isn't going to look chocolatey at all because <laughs> it's got no oil, hardly any chocolate. So I'm just adding my two eggs into the mix now. self-raising flour from Morrison's and you need 250 grams of this so that's my self-raising flour a minute your mix should look like this lovely lovely jubbly I'm just gonna add my flour in don't know if I add all of it in I'll stir if we use more cocoa powder then it stays because I don't actually have very much chocolate like in so. so it says to use 50 grams of this. I'm using the um, Cadbury's Bourneville Cacao powder for this. And you tell how much I've used it because it's all stuck. So I'm actually going to use 100 grams. So I'm using 100 grams of my cocoa powder. Maybe I should sieve it, actually. That's a good idea. And a sieve. Sieve's always coming handy. <laughs> so yeah, this, this one's quite lumpy bumpy. Just gonna give, give it a sieve down. God, that is quite bumpy, isn't it? Smells like chocolate. And then like for the little bumps, I tend to just like kind of scrape them until, until they go down the hole. <laughs> there you go, gone in no time at all. So I'm using just the co-op baking powder now. Um, so a quarter of a teaspoon mix of 100 millimetres boiling water. Should probably boil the kettle down if I need that. A quarter TSP, what's that? A teaspoon. I was I know it's teaspoon and tablespoon, but I get confused of what's a teaspoon and what's a tablespoon. Like So yes, this is a teaspoon, so I'm just going to use a quarter of a teaspoon, that, oh, quarter of a teaspoon, in a jug, and I'm going to add it with some boiling water, because that's what it says to use, 
I am just going to get a wooden spoon and kind of plonk this down a bit. It's a bit um, moundy, if you can, you can see that. Believe me, the mixture is under there. Fizzed and bubbled on me, but uh, it's not even a 50. Okay, that's the baking powder with boiling water. So I'm just going to add that into there. I hope. <laughs> and then I need a bit of milk in there, don't I? 200 milligrams of milk. Wow. Milliliters even. <laughs> milligrams. So I'm just using again the co-op semi-skimmed milk. Simple in a little jug like this. In it goes. This is going to be one hell of a muffin mix. So <laughs> the mix should then look like this. Kind of looks like a bit of a mess, I know, but it would look amazing. <laughs> This is them. I left them for a few days um, just so they could, they had time to cool, and then I obviously I had to go to work, so I didn't get a chance to ice them, which is what I'm doing now. Lovely. So some of them have actually all come away from their like cake, cake cases, so they all look a bit like this, which is a bit annoying, but. This is them. Lovely, aren't they? They look lovely. So I did actually, I wanted to do, I wanted to do chocolate icing, uh, orange icing, but this is like an easy swirl cupcake icing. And it's from Dr. However you'd like to say it, I personally say Oetka. So this is from Dr. Oetka. And I got it from the co-op. I did also get some white edible glitter, but I'm not sure if that's very Halloween. -y, so I'm not sure <laughs> if I'm gonna put that on it or not. This is really cool. I'm gonna have a practice go because I'm not sure. Oh, it's um, it's not going. Well. There we go. <laughs> so again, I'm using these scrumptious sprinkles and they're just like little Halloween -y, witchy colours, I guess. this this is the Muller Corner Halloween edition with spooky skull biscuits so that is what I really wanted I wanted the biscuits out of here so I could put them on top <laughs> um, so yeah It done 13 and I've got 40. <laughs> um, but yeah, very, very would highly would recommend that. Very good. So now my cakes are done. Look at them. They look so cute. 
So you can find that recipe on BBC Good Food, like I said. Highly would recommend it, very good. They've turned out lovely. The cake's moist as well, so. And I can't wait to give them to all my friends and family. Thank you.